हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द वॉइस ऑफ वाइल्ड एन एनवायरनमेंट एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ पॉडकास्ट इनिशिएटिव बाय नेचुरलिस्ट फाउंडेशन विद दिस पॉडकास्ट वी ब्रिंग यू क्लोजर टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ कंजर्वेशन साइंटिफिक रिसर्च एंड गवर्नमेंट एनवायरमेंटल पॉलिसीज आई एम जबा मदानी योर होस्ट फॉर टुडे लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ट्रैवल डायरीज व्हाट आर ट्रैवल डायरीज अकॉर्डिंग टू डिक्शनरी डेफिनेशन अ ट्रैवल जर्नल travel diary or a road journal is a documentation of journey or a series of journeys traveling or in serious terms migration has always been a major contributing factor towards the development of various civilizations do you know that humans originally originated from africa from there we moved towards different parts of the world and it was due to the climatic shift from wet to dry climate it was about 60000 years ago and today we still migrate but today our migration is mostly due to employment education or sometimes fun similar to us animals do migrate they have been migrating before us and they will probably migrate after us unless we change their course and as a dominating species on the planet we can do that So our travel diaries today starts right from the smallest butterflies to the largest whales and to see how these migrants come to our countries and fly to different countries and over time how we have changed their natural course So before we explore further let's clear a few terms Migration is a big term it includes of various words and various definitions Let's focus on non-migrant short distance migrant long distance migrant non migrant are species that stay in a single place throughout the lifetime because the climate food and everything else is habitable for them but short distance migrant can travel from one state to another state one of the most known example that i can give you is of flamingos that migrate from gujarat to mumbai every year during the winter season and if you stay in mumbai you must have heard about the flamingo century that is in thane creek and then there is long distance migrants and this migrants undoubtedly shows the most amazing faces of nature humpback whales are one of the example of long distance migrants they travel about 4900 kilometers from the feeding grounds in the polar region to the breeding grounds in the tropical region Let's start our diaries with two species of birds. One that we couldn't save and the other that we just saved in time. The first one is Siberian crane. The name comes from Siberia where it originally breeds. Siberian crane starts their journey as two different population, the eastern and the western population. So the eastern population travels from Siberia to China. They spend their winters in Yangtze River in China. On the other hand, a small part of the western population still lives in the Caspian Sea in Iran, but the larger part that used to come to Bharatpur National Park is extinct. The last pair of the flock was seen in December 2002. Why do you think this population went extinct? Is it because of the water crisis in Koladev National Park or is it because hunting or poaching in the national park? When the population started decreasing in 1990s there was a research that was conducted to understand why and it was understood that the population kept on decreasing year by year due to the war driven migratory route of the bird Siberian crane passes from Russia to Kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan Afghanistan Pakistan and finally to India If you're traveling to same location every year and it is a long distance travel So you have particular locations or particular routes that you take and places where you rest and eat. It was same for the Siberian crane. They have various stops in all the different countries they travel through, and one of those stop was in in Afghanistan, where they were hunted in large numbers, and that led to the decrease in the population year by year. And in two thousand and five, it was finally confirmed that the Indian population of Siberian crane went extinct. but various organizations today in india are trying to bring back the population the idea is to get the siberian crane eggs from russia hatch them and train them to fly back to india 
So the species that we just saved in time, a more falcon as the name suggests is a bird of prey. Similar to Siberian crane, Amur falcons are also long-distance migrant species. They start their journey from northern China to Nagaland and then to Botswana and this is a long distance for a small bird to travel, right? They need some time to rest and this resting spot for them was Nagaland and there they used to stay for 3 to 4 weeks during winters. Before they fly towards the final destination, a group of researchers who visited Pangti in October 2012 discovered this horrifying scene where 12,000 to 14,000 Amur falcons were killed. The incident was revealed and there was a massive outcry within the international and national conservation organizations. After the revelation, many campaigns were held in Nagaland. Many organizations such as BNHS, Red Cross Society, WWF, they all reached Nagaland to understand why the killings were happening and to create awareness about it. India signed International Convention of Migratory Species and this incident came out as a big failure for the country. And two years after the revelation, due to the efforts of various organizations, Nagaland was termed as the falcon capital of the world. And it was a very evident incident that showed that humans and animals can live together in peace and both can help each other survive. So our next travel diary for the day is of monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies travel around 4,900 kilometers, similar to humpback whales. And consider the size here. They show one of the most amazing migration characteristics. An average lifespan of monarch butterfly is around 2 to 3 weeks. But at the end of the year, just before migration, a generation is born and this generation is called as super generation. This generation lives for 8 months, that is 8 times higher than the average monarch lives. Monarch starts their journey in Canada and northern US and concludes it in the mountains of Mexico. This super generation is only generation that starts the journey from Canada and take a round trip and end their journey in Canada again. Now, let's talk about man-animal conflict. One of the most heard about man-animal conflict is about elephants and the farmers. Farmers complain that elephants enter their territory, destroy their farms. But think of this from an elephant's perspective. Elephant migration is of 20 years, at the end of every cycle. They come back to the same location where they started during the start of the cycle. And within the span of 20 years, various landscape patterns change. So earlier the location that used to be a forest, now it can be a farm or a residential complex. But guess what? Elephants don't know that. They don't have news. And they come back to these locations, they see green grass or crops and they feed on them and then they are killed for it. But today, many organizations are working towards conservation and protection of this migratory species. And because of the efforts of such organizations, the area in and around Thane Creek, where lakhs of birds come every year from Russia, China or Mongolia to India, are protected in this zone. And not just big fancy organizations. I feel every single one of us can play a big role in protection and conservation of animals by educating, understanding and protecting. I hope all of you enjoyed this podcast. We'll keep posting such content every week. Please like, share and subscribe or follow us to stay updated. And please support us on Patreon to show appreciation to our young team that creates and provides such informatic content. Links mentioned in the description. Thank you and see you next time.